and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a, well, te technically a new technically a newcomer, even though... <laughs> Or even though our original run of it, um, you ne none of you ever saw because it because my, because of computer problems. Coming to us straight from Ironverse Comics, the root the rootinest, tootinest, shootinest, weird we weird west co weird west comics this uh, this side of the Mississippi. The one and only Cody Fernandez. How you doing today, man? Doing all right. Uh, thank you so much for having me on again. Mm -hmm. Looking forward for you know to, to engage with that. I'm I'm excited and I'm glad to be here. Glad glad to have you glad to have you back. So now we kind of touched on this the first time around in the lost episode. Um, but I'd like you to go. I'd like you to go into how you how you got into um comics. Oh, absolutely. That's you know, comics are, are, are one of my favorite things right now, mm -hmm. um, and, and have been for for quite some time. So, um, well, well, if we're talking about how I got into comics, um, I guess we start with just my love of reading. I think mm -hmm. I think that's where where you know it all begins. Uh, when I was a kiddo, uh, once I learned to read, I took great pride in 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 being able to read. It, it kept me, you know. Um, it was a, uh, this whole hidden thing that suddenly was unlocked. It was a beautiful, you know, it's a, it's a, it was a very cool thing for a young mind to get a hold of. I, I think most everybody ends up experiencing that in, in some way or another, uh, even if it ends up falling falling in the back background, right, and, and then just moving forward and becoming kind of mundane. Um, but, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I remember reading over and over again posters in, in the nurse's office and being super proud of that and such, and, 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 and storybooks and, and all that as a kiddo, and I think my love of comics was really kind of set in with, with children's books. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you, you come across, you know, Garfield, and you come across comics mm -hmm. around the same time that you're, you're exposed to the very similar types of art because the bright and uh, friendly images uh, really attract a, a, a child's eye. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's, that's kind of uh, where my journey started. But in comics itself... Um, as like a serious like super passion, something I wanted to collect, enjoy, and eventually be a part of. Um, really wasn't until my my teenage years when I was kind of exploring different types of art and 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 just trying to figure out what's going on. You know, when you're growing up, when you're getting older, just trying to figure out what's going on with with everything. Um, and um, my love of film and and uh, uh <laughs> particularly a lot of 80s action movies but i i also grew up in biker culture a lot of things um the um the saturday morning cartoons would i guess be part of the thing that bridged this gap you know mm -hmm. batman the animated series spider-man the animated series x-men um around that time um that was my first real exposure to superheroes as a as a property as an idea mm -hmm. um and then, then that kind of ended up transitioning as I got older. You know, you're not watching that as much, and you're kind of trying to figure out other things. And I started looking at what else was coming through there. And um, eventually, uh, a a run from uh, Garth Ennis and Clayton Crane on Ghost Rider uh, called Road to Damnation. Uh, mm -hmm. The artistry uh, put forward in that just blew my young mind. I grew up a little bit in biker culture, so it's, I always kind of liked Ghost Rider as an idea and a concept. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was what sunk its teeth into me. I saw a medium that even film couldn't compete with in the expression of ideas and 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 the the, the almost the pure expression of artistry uh, from from the from Clayton Crane's digital line art, but also uh, just how the 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 the, the wit uh, of Ennis really really hooked me. And then from there, I started checking out other Ennis works. And as I said before, big. Uh, Big action movie fan, and uh, that led me to Punisher. And um, yeah, since those two, I've been hooked for 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 life. Uh, Punisher Max really showed what can be done in that medium that film, TV, um, and even books can't really communicate the same way. Mm -hmm. And um, that hooked me on on sequential art, and it really made me made me think. Mm -hmm. um, 
my path on on writing was around a similar time, exploring. Uh, uh, I guess it's still called a screenplay, but a, a, a uh, you know, play scripts. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where I kind of started as a kid. Um, it was easier to write for me than prose. I prefer I prefer the writing in comics and in, in those more direct mediums where you don't have to fill space as much. Um, and, and you can be a little bit more impatient, right? You can communicate uh, a complicated idea a lot quicker um, without having to worry about extraneous uh, detail. Mm-hmm. And... Um, that that was what did it. And that really was what brought me to, to comics and has hooked me. And I've just exploded uh, <laughs> in my love of it uh, since. Just exploring everything I get a hold of. I, I went to Daredevil after that and his mm-hmm. explo- the how writers would explore sensation and and um, his tragedies, his losses. Um, that that really resonated with me. Um, or I'm a I'm a Marvel guy, but eventually I I did bridge over to to DC with some uh, some Hellblazer because um, I was interested in those kind of themes and and man was I blown away. Uh, I started with the uh, the Jamie Delano just started separate series and I was hooked mm-hmm. since. Um, and um, Batman, of course, I had to go Batman. It's it's mm-hmm. a very I, I like my street level grimy grungy semi realistic heroes quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um. And given that, given that, um, I'm cur- during the, during the during this period of exploration when it came to comics and exp- and expanding from just the um, familiar type of superhero that you had grown up with. Um, did you ever did you ever expand into the into the works of of the independent and through through labels like um, Image, Dark Horse, and um, Dynamite? Yeah, I'm sure I did on straight issues, but like nothing resonated with me. The closest again, Vertigo uh, with Hellblazers, the closest I came to that spectrum for a very long time. Now since, since I've read quite a lot. Um, Dynamite, I particularly like their westerns um, quite a bit. Like their recent Lone Ranger series is great. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Boom, I read. Uh, I don't remember its, its story. Boom, I read a couple like D and D stories that they put out. Mm-hmm. Uh, one was by Jim Zub. I really like his work. Um, and, um, then another was by, um, oh, I don't remember the other D&D, but then there was another one where it's like Rednecks and, and Zombies, a real quick self-contained story. Mm-hmm. And that did help me open my eyes to the possibilities. Um, and when I started collecting comics, I would go on eBay and I would, um, check out those like, uh, bulk boxes where it's like, here's 15 bucks for 50 comics, no duplicates. Mm-hmm. And I just picked those up and I just looked through them and read what looked interesting. Right. So yep. there's a lot of those spare stories and, and just kind of loose stories that that i have read through image but um image like 90s image which i ended up with a lot with it didn't resonate with me wildcats uh, storm watch um even death below a lot of those 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 things didn't really hit me what, uh, what did hit me uh, spawn i didn't end up with much spawn right so i actually knew spawn more from the really bad film <laughs> uh, <laughs> that i that i knew as spawn and that mm-hmm. really kind of it, it didn't paint anything i really do appreciate the character i appreciate todd mcfarlane very much mm-hmm. but but yeah none of the the superhero stuff from image ever really clicked um at that time uh now it's still kind of that but um yeah, I, I can't think of... I, I'm kind of hyped for, for McFarlane's Spawnverse, but it, it's um, just because of the talent that he's bringing in and, and the force and push. I mean, the Todd Father is, is great for comics. I freaking love the man on, on the business and personality and artistry level. But, um, yeah, it, it just never really clicked with me, Spawn. Yeah. Um, I have to wonder if I have to wonder if what if that situation may have been different if your if your introduction was the um was the animated series on HBO. Um, it probably would have. I love the voice in that. Uh, it's, it's so good. It's so good. I really do appreciate that. The Max also was another one that like the art style really stood out to me. Yeah. But um, I didn't have any of the comics, right? So I watched a little bit of the show, and I really liked how kind of batshit nuts it was at the same time. Very very thoughtful. And, um, so, I mean, there was a lot of really cool stuff. It just didn't click to me. It just, uh, it just wasn't part of my bit. What, what did, um, was the, uh, Jim Shooter era of Valiant, 
where he was really building that universe around the same time. Something about the the colors and how connected everything was. Yeah. Um, and I ended up with a bunch of Valiant. So, like, Solar at that point, Tarak, um, freaking uh, Ninja Jack, um, all of those guys, uh, they they really did. I ended up with a bunch of that. So that, that really clicked with me. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of on that side of the... Uh, the the spectrum and it's it's interesting it's interesting that you bring up, it's interesting that you bring up um jim shooter given given how he's had a um he's had he's had a, he's had a de- he's had a device he's had a divisive um view yes. of, view over view over the years and yeah. it's hard it's hard to say it's hard to say where it where the truth actually nails down because yeah so many of the stories contradict each other um yep I do, th- I do think that he, j- that he, that he was somebody who was very passionate about about um, about the art of com- of comic books, but just had really, really awful luck. I think so too, and I think he was abrasive and a little too strong for a lot of creative types, and he was very, very focused and driven, right? And yeah. so there wasn't enough wiggle room for creatives to be creatives in a lot of cases. And so that's instantly going to become a problem. It might not uh, be one that you can't work around, but eventually it will become one that you can't work around. And I, yeah, I think that's that's probably what happened. I mean, he started in it at like 14, if I remember right, he was doing stuff for, for Marvel. Mm. Um, so there's, there's a lot of love and passion in his career there. So, I, I mean, um, yeah, I don't know if I'd want to work with the guy, but I certainly could respect the work I would do under the guy. Although <laughs> I get the feeling you'd probably say the same thing about McFarland because McFarland yeah. has admitted him has admitted to being to being an asshole. I yeah, I could see that. I could very well see that. And, uh, it's, it's, sometimes it takes an asshole to get things done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it can. And granted, um, when it granted when it comes to when it came to that whole asshole thing, um. A lot of it is a lot of it is due to the fact that he, along with a lot of those first generation image guys, grew up with the stories of how Jack Kirby got got screwed over, and yes. he did not want that to happen to him. So his whole mindset was, "I'm gonna fuck you before you can fuck me." Yeah, and I guess that's fair, and it it worked out, right? And we mm. still have this wonderful um, place for independent stories to be told on a level on par or about on par to the other big two, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of awareness and, and such. And that is an amazing gift to comics. Uh, yeah. If it was just the dichotomy, we would all be little Jack Kirby's getting getting screwed there. <laughs> so, I mean, I really do appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, it's um, it's a trip. It's a trip. I, I've... Uh, that's the other part of this, right, is the business part. And I that's one I've been getting very direct lessons from all over the place. And I've been privileged because our book is, is crowdfunded to be able to get that education myself and directly without having to go through these these hoops and these channels and, and different types of networking and, and go through a gym shooter or go through to get my idea out there. And, um, I mean, it's only because of folks like you yeah. give, me a, give me a shot to talk about it and share the work. Mm-hmm. Now... Since you mentioned growing up with with biker culture, this um this brings up something that I've I've um I've mentioned a couple times over the years that I've that I had a, that I had a bit of an interest in, but I never but I never I never delved too deeply into it simply because I couldn't find enough people to to bounce discussion off of. And I will admit that I um be, being a being a uh, being a kid who grew up in the mi- in the middle of bum ass nowhere in the in in the Midwest um, didn't grow up with that kind of culture. Um, yeah. What was what was your take of that of that brief blip when um when the talk of the town was Sons of Anarchy? I didn't pay attention. Uh, that's the Hell's Angel spectrum of biker culture. I couldn't give two shits about that. It it that came from World War II uh, scouts uh, on their Harleys finding meth on dead Nazis. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. really and they brought it back with their PTSD and then they formed gangs. I'm not a big fan of that spectrum of biker culture. All right. I'm I'm a fan of the Easy Rider spectrum. The hippies, the wanderers, the nomads, the the almost the Grateful Dead kind of spectrum of that. The 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 free spirit spectrum. Mm-hmm. The uh, David Mann. Um, and again, Easy Rider, the 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 magazine, um, I, that that kind of spectrum. It's a little bit different. Now yeah. I'm glad. Um, I'm always happy when uh, motorcycle culture comes back up because there is that that uh, Iron Horse modern cowboy feel to it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the the harder edged, uh, grimy 
more darkness end of it. I've I've been lucky enough not to have been directly exposed too much. There's a few gangs that I've been around uh, down here where I am uh, that uh, not so friendly, and then there's a couple that are really nice, and I had some really really uh, nice. Uh, you know, uh, older uncles and stuff that were great folks to get to know, mm-hmm. but uh, it's uh, it's very much a mixed mixed bag, right? Um, groupings yeah, I, always are. Yeah, I got I got that, and, th- and I appreciate you uh, cl- you clearing that kind of thing up for me. Um, yeah, but- uh, and just like even Ghost Rider kind of comes from that, the stunt motorcyclist, the the teenager trying to express himself via being dangerous living, right? Mm-hmm. Um, not so much on the the again the uh, the the business end of motorcycle culture. Yes. <laughs> but when but um that do, that does bring me to to the to the likes of Jack Irons. Well, when you um a lot i've seen a lot of works kind of kind of ev- kind of evolve what st- what style of um up what style of approach what style of sandbox they wa- they wanted to do mm-hmm. when it came to J- when it came to jack irons was it something that evolved into a space western or was that the plan from the get go it was kind of the pa- plan from the get go the the icon of uh an armored cowboy was like a big big like picture in my head i really like the idea it's kind of mix a, a shiny knight with with this again that that freedom kind of feeling that very american icon um that really always resonated with me right a, a free spirit out there to do hopefully to do good but at the very least uh just just to find freedom and yeah. and, and that's one of my pictures for it it's an, a reincarnated immortal trying to find freedom and purpose in galactic armageddon mm. but um uh, Really, that that was part of it. I always wanted that that vibe. So it was Jack Irons was inspired a lot by Mad Max, uh, which is again kind of a freedom, kind of a, a singular lone guy against the world kind of thing. But he's not out against the world. It's the world against him, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, fighting the machine—that's a big one. I mean, even in the first issue, it, it, fighting the machine is how it ends. Uh, but. Uh, that that's the bit. It's it's counterculture, right? That's that's kind of a, a huge part of where where my work comes from. Uh, is is pure expressions uh, of counterculture in a productive, hopeful but realistic manner in terms of you know what you're against that that machine. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that that that's kind of a lot of those ideas from from films from movies again the the lone vigilante it's it's a very similar idea um so you go back to like robocop and you go from different different kinds of uh uh, films um from that time that were a little bit more gory and a little bit hard-edged um that's that's kind of what a lot of it was is where it treats it with with well, the, the you know, again the gore and, and such helps it ground and be a little bit more realistic and really place the stakes. But then it it still tries to be hopeful. It's still trying to do good or trying to to at least find a better way. Um, and that's 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 kind of what I'm doing. What, what I'm trying to do with uh, all of Ironverse comics in one way or another. Mm-hmm. And uh, our little armored cowboy there um, has resonated the most out of our work with with folks and. Um, it's our wonderful art team, and it's hopefully the tale. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, as always, happy, happy to share it, and I, I hope that kind of, kind of gets, gets what you were at. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes, now when it comes to, when it comes to some of the visual, some of the visual inspirations, you mentioned, you mentioned the whole um, mythos of the um, of the American cowboy. Um, the other th- the other aspect that I'm cu- that I'm curious about because I do I do remember when this originally was on Indiegogo you met you if this got mentioned I think you mentioned it in a few tweets that a- another major influence was Samurai Jack. Um, oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, so what I'm cu- what I'm curious about is what is um how did you get how did you get introduced to a character like that and what what was it about something like Samurai Jack that drew that drew you in. I mean, I guess if you get right, a coup becomes the culture, becomes the enforcement. And again, Samurai Jack is this amalgam of a bunch of different cultures putting their hope and faith in who they believe to be a good man is proven to be a good man, and he rises up against this culture. That I mean, that again, that's 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 that common link. It's it's I think how spaghetti westerns translated so well from from the uh, Akira Kurosawa films. I think it's that same same spirit of 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 individuality rising up to do better in in a collective world. 
Um, and I think that's that's the big part of it. Um, and Samurai Jack is a massive influence uh, in Ironverse Comics as a whole, simply because again we we have an Aku. It's these four horsemen. It's a very similar in in concept. Um, uh, the other big influence that I'm going to bring up, just because it's 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 where this Aku thing is also, is Warhammer 40k. Mm. When I discovered the grim darkness of the far future, um, <laughs> where there's only war, there was a um, it was that grind, that realism, and then this epic fantasy scale um, mm. that just really resonated. And then it it was pivoted on on five pillars, but four that that were still exceedingly active, uh, which were the chaos gods. And so we. I adapted that a little bit to add more of a grounded biblical sense uh, because, you know, there's there's icons to the horsemen uh, a, a, as that sense, but they act more as that level of strength and power as, as a chaos god more than, say, an Aku, who's kind of an affable, goofy, but cruel dictator, right? But mm. uh, these guys are out to manifest reality into themselves, and they will kill everything, including their brothers, to get it done. And um, we also, Ironverse Comics is a lost universe. They have basically won. There's a very fascistic uh, government, uh, alien government, that kind of holds them off a little bit, mm -hmm. but at what cost? Which, again, 40k. Um, but also, um, you know, our, our our tagline for Ironverse Comics is um, when reality belongs to evil, heroes are inevitable. So it's this again this this faith in a counterculture uprising to to improve things, uh, whether it's from an individual or a small group of individuals or an idea or something. And that's that's kind of where we're coming from. Mm -hmm. Now, in the in the last in the last year or so. Um, one person who does a, who does a lot of dissection when it comes to the mythos of superheroes that I that I've taken an interest in is Professor Geek. Um, some of the things he says I don't necessarily agree with, but I I always um, respect where he's coming from. He's t he's talked about there being two primary types of of heroic figures when it com when it comes to when it comes to the uh, modern mythos of superheroes. The aspirational hero and the cathartic hero. Um, the with with in that now in that kind of paradigm, would you say that that Irons is more of the aspirational or the cathartic in terms of his, in terms of his arc? Well, his arc. See, that's a whole thing. His arc hopefully won't finish for a good twenty five years, mm -hmm. but. If it's say if you had to finish next year or is done now, right, and I just finish it, then um, it's it's a catharsis. But he hasn't done much in these first three issues to to have much of a catharsis, and you wouldn't want to be him. So I don't think he'd fit into either of those currently. Um, by the end of the run, he it pivots on a single choice, and I don't think you'd want to be in the shoes to make that choice. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if it would be a catharsis because it's a very hard choice. But I I don't know. I don't know. Uh, my hope with Jack Irons, how I designed him, is as a as a modern folk hero, someone who almost anybody from any background can look into the history and and this this idea of this man who, again, uh, like Samurai Jack, has all these different cultures, ideas, and in his case, literal lives that have been lived both on the good spectrum and the bad spectrum. He's stuck in this life. He can't end it. So he's stuck with all the burden, this, this massive weight of, of humanity, even if it's just a, a small piece. It's a bigger piece than any other being will probably ever know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so in a way, I guess he carries that weight nicely. So in that way, I guess it is... It is aspirational. He still remains a good person. He see he hasn't like a, a Vandal Savage, for instance, uh, from DC. Very kind of similar character, super immortal, um, but he wants to change the world. He wants to own the world. He believes he's kind of given a right through this, through the proof that he is stuck here to do it. Now he's had different arcs, and one of my favorites is from Justice League Unlimited, where he eventually does destroy the world. Superman gets sent into the future and meets him, and Vandal has realized, you know, I, I really fucked up. <laughs> I really I appreciate that kind of arc. But, um, yeah, at, at the end of the day, maybe there's a bit of aspiration simply because 
one of the main tenets of Jack, and what, what drives him is he has all this weight, all this evil. He knows mankind better than any other man, person can. Mm -hmm. And um, still carries on, still tries to do good, even in a world that's literally tearing itself apart at the seams. A reality that's tearing itself apart at the seams. Trying to manifest into the worst things you can imagine. Um, so I guess maybe on the aspirational end there, if, if, if that far. But in the story so far, that's about the best you could get out of it. And you really have to dig into it to really get as far as I just did it, it, from that. Otherwise, you're, just, you're getting a, a straightforward introduction in what we've released so far. Yeah. Now, when it comes to... When it came to the, the, um, wor the world... That he that he's that he's living in. Um, what I'm something I'm curious is, is were there any sort of um, hard and fast rules you had put you, you had put in place to make sure that the wor that the world he inhabits is familiar but not too but not too, for lack of a better terms, weird. Well, I mean, uh, we're gonna get weirder as it goes. But um, the main thing again is we had these pillars. We we had four pillars, five if you count the Anu Confederation, um, that basically have a hand in anything. So that that instantly kind of sets a footing and a grounding on how things would act. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, famine, uh, corporate greed, uh, lust, um, the, the, the worst of the, the bureaucracy, um, the, the grinding bits of the machine there, um, that makes it easy, right? I just had to place them... Uh, in territories, so their rules, and it's very similar to the Chaos Gods, is is when there's a certain level, a planet in this case, uh, and it would be more of a species, a, a, a gestalt uh, thinking set of life forms, manifests a a certain level of let's say decadence or maybe war or um, scientific. Uh, uh, exploitation, um, they will tear into reality an aspect of, of these horsemen who will then begin to prepare themselves. Mm -hmm. So basically anything that happens in Ironverse comics is triggered by one of those things or those things uh, uh, facing off. And so that, that was kind of the, the hard and fast rule. And um, everything kind of was easily grounded uh, because on Earth... Uh, we were able to manifest all four about the same time. No, none of them could get ahead of each other. And so it, it set this, you know, it separated the world into different parts that are trying to get off Earth, but mm -hmm. are unable to. Now, issue two explains kind of why Earth still exists like this and why none, nobody, uh, none of the horsemen have actually taken over. And when a horseman takes over, they then eventually uh, rejoin other aspects of themselves in, in space and in the galaxy at large that have manifested, have controlled. And so you have entire star systems and chunks of the galaxy controlled by these things. But um, at this point in the story, if you're reading Jack, it's a very Earth-centric story. We have in Ironverse Comics another tale um, that's been a manga. It's a 42-page free-to-read manga on ironversecomics.com, if folks are interested, um, that explores more of the space aspects. And so what we're doing is we are building the galaxy and we are building Earth. And eventually we will We'll bridge the gap and then once we bridge the gap it's going to be almost more of a one piece adventure where one piece it was the world government um and other pirate clans in this case it will be uh the four horsemen and the galactic government <laughs> so again it's, it's a counterculture that's rising up uh but both on a micro scale and a macro scale which that de that um def that definitely makes sense now when it comes to when it comes to the um, vi when it comes to the visual styling, um, and what and ju and just the just the artwork and the art st and the art style, um, how 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 did that um, come to come to settle in its current form? That that goes into me breaking into comics, right? So I I, I read a bunch of comics. I really love comics. Mm -hmm. I I looked and looked to see how you write comics to see if it was any different from what I wrote before. Found out that you know some publishing houses, some writers have a set script the uh, script format that they like, but there was none that was like hard and fast and loose. And what I found in my own experience, especially in indies, is that no two scripts are the same formatting. Very be very similar, but they're not the same. Um, and um, that freedom again, the the freedom. Of sequential art and the comics medium is what really, really hooked me. And um, yeah, it's it's uh, 
the art style, so so I, I wanted to make comics, and so I can't draw, but I tried. You know, I had to get the idea on my uh, out of my head. So if folks check out our YouTube and a few other places. I have shown my original concept drawings of Jack, a uh, guy in a uh, an almost uh, graded metal trench coat, uh, with a cowboy hat. Um, you know, I I had to look, and so I I you have no idea what you're doing when you start this, especially when I. Uh, I had the, the wonderful resources of the internet so that I could learn certain things from there. Again, that's how I f even figured out that there's no set style or what helped inspire me and keep me going. But um, trying to reach out to artists, that was the whole thing. But I just, I, I eventually, due to a couple different circumstances, ended up with a little bit of change, a little bit of extra. I had about 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had no idea how much, you know, comic artists or anything costs. <laughs> no idea. I was just this naive guy trying to, to stick his foot in the door. Um, looked at all these things, how to break into comics and all that, and, and none of it like s seemed to ring true. And it makes sense because honestly, it's always an individual path. People can share their path, and hopefully, you can learn something from it so that you can maybe not make the same mistakes. But a lot of your successes are going to be your own, uh, from your own doing and your own kind of ideas. It's not going to be this is how you do it step by step. Mm -hmm. um, and so I knew that right away. So I, that cut me free a little bit. It's like I want to make a comic. I can't draw. Let's find an artist. So I tried, and there's been a lot of back and forth. And uh, a lot of artists I talked to wouldn't tell me that I was going to pay them too low. They just would ghost me. Mm -hmm. um, so I wasn't learning, right? I had no, <laughs> no idea that you know where, where the footing was. But eventually, I, I decided, you know what? Maybe if I try locally, I'll have a better chance because I can meet this person, talk to them, share the ideas, get a more personal grounding with them and see what they feel and what can be done. At least get a preview or something, you know, a couple concept sketches, something to help me get it moving forward, just any step forward. Mm -hmm. And so I tried Craigville back when that wasn't, you know, it was still pretty risky. You'd still be, be shanked in an alley, right? But uh, <laughs> I miss a kidney uh, afterwards. But uh, it, it's, it's, it, I lucked out. Um, found a wonderful um, Argentinian artist who actually has who comes in and out of New Mexico here and there. He has family in Santa Fe, um, and has gone through Taos. And he saw my listing. He contacted me, and we met. I looked at his art. He was primarily in children's illustration, but he did a lot of different things. A uh, younger man than me too at the at that time. I think I was. Uh, maybe 23, see this is five years, yeah man, I'm getting old, oh, five years ago or so, it's five or six years ago, um, and he was about in 2021, 20, um, and we met in the McDonald's, we, he showed me his portfolio, he spoke decent English, hell of a lot better than I could speak uh, 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 <laughs> his versions of Spanish, but um, and we just exchanged. I guess he clicked on my idea. Maybe he needed the cash at the time, whatever. And and we we started that rapport. And uh, we've been working together for six years. And his his art style has evolved, and it's really set the tone. Um, again, I had loose. I I had distinct icons. I guess is the best I could say in my mind. Again, the armored cowboy. Um, it's kind of a chivalrous image of a rebel. Um, and then I had the Four Horsemen, which I wanted very distinct and very specific for what they, they you know, uh, relate to. You have a big, hulking, Spartan guy for war. You have a, a masked, uh, breathing toxins kind of uh, scientist. You have the, the scriggly, wiry, cunning, mean-looking businessman. And, and then you have this more native, grounded, old-world death. So it's something that feels ancient, something that feels older than all his brothers. Um, and and Maxie took those loose ideas, those descriptions, and made something awesome out of them. Mm -hmm. um, all of those things. Uh, he started with Jack. Um, in fact, I met him one day and we talked about it. He's like, let me do some concept sk sketches and then I'll, I'll, we'll meet again in a week and see if we want to move forward and how we want to. And um, so with Jack, and I was just hooked. Uh, his style used to have... Um, a, a little bit more realism to it. I know he has uh, a lot of influences like uh, uh, James Heron. Um, oh, God. The, uh, well, oh, that might be the, who I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to bug me. Um, is James Heron the, the guy who, who did the gorillas in Tank Girl? It might have. It's been a long time since I read yeah, Tank Girl. Yeah, no worries. No, yeah, no, I get it. 
kind of on on the edge there. But he had um, he had a lot of independent comic influences um, that I didn't even know about at, at that point. And so what he's he's done since then, um, and you could see it in issue one, to issue two, because there was about a three year gap. Which um, I can also talk about what I was doing during that time, what we were doing during that time. But um, there was, um, there's been a growth, and and now he's he's started to refine it, so it becoming closer, even more iconic in in that it's less defined, so that that the it's the same thing that a lot of cartoonists do. So you you'll see these loose lines, and yes, we recognize them as a person, but you'll be surprised how little detail can be recognized as a person. It's just how our brains work, and so he's been able to do that with Jack Irons while keeping the iconography very clear. And so the looser it gets, the more recognizable and again iconic it gets. And and that's that's been I mean he's he's been an absolute gift. A, a, no other line artist could have manifested Jack like we've been able. to to like like Maxi has a wonderful talent. Mm-hmm. Now, when it co- uh, when it came to the when it came to the um, when it came to the writing end, you had mentioned that you had mentioned that your so that a lot of your early writing up before you started diving into comic writing was in um, writing play scripts. Um, were there were there any were there any parts that were um, trick that were trickier to transition over from writing play scripts to writing comic scripts? Not really, because I, again, I didn't really have a, a defined format, right? So the only thing I did instead of setting scene, uh, dialogue, maybe you would do a setting description and stuff. Very very similar. Uh, you just put panel. You know, you just put uh, I, what I ended up doing and what my current is, which I think was very similar to my previous. Was I, I will describe the page. Uh, by a scene description and kind of what the mood is and where we're going from from panel to the end. So what what the idea trying to be co- communicated is, and then I'll do it panel by panel with dialogue. Um, well, with with descriptions of the panel and then dialogue under. That's that's how I've done it, um, and that worked fine. It wasn't it was not that different. In fact, I liked it a lot better because I didn't have to worry about logistics. Right, you don't have to worry about doing this on a on a stage. Um, so that that I mean it was very freeing, very liberating. Um, that's comics does. Um, sequential art is is literally limitless how you want to do it if you if you can do it as a writer artist you are completely free however you want to manifest that page mm-hmm. um and and with maxi again the uh, the 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 bit there's i there's a lot that maybe i didn't understand in pacing or i didn't understand in panel setup right that's a lot of what the artist uh, does he frames it and makes sure that the gutters are communicating the right timing that that the shape of it is interesting that the angle and shot is interesting so um i let him free on that because everything he got back to me ended up being just so much better mm. than than anything I, I honestly had envisioned. It would be very similar, right? It would communicate the same ideas, but the pacing, the imagery, and all that would be from an artist's perspective instead of uh, a guy who's just trying to communicate ideas. Mm-hmm. And within the within that within that kind of approach, when you now um. Obviously, obviously the um, the hard co- the hardcover volume one that is cur- that is currently being kickstarted, um, yes. is a collection of issues one through three, of um, of the of the original comic. Um, when you when you were laying out the script, were you were you writing at that time specifically for those th- for those three issues? No, <laughs> no, not at all. So when I started writing Jack, and this was maybe oh, five years before I, I followed through on actually getting an artist and meeting Maxie and getting that done. So this is like I'm 15, 16. I'm reading Ghost Rider. I'm reading Punisher. I'm reading Marvel Civil War. Um, and um, I'm just uh, uh, try, trying to get these, these ideas down. And, uh, yeah, no, I uh, I forgot your question. I apologize. What was the, the, the idea there? Um it had, it's one more time. It's it was more to it more to if you if you were if when you were start when you're starting writing, were you writing for ju- were you writing just with the, just with those three issues in mind or? That was it. Yeah, no. Um, what I did is I wanted to do a graphic novel, 144 pages. So I it ended up being about four chapters or so. I think I did uh, 32 page issues, something like that. Uh, so I just broke it down like that, and um, through the journey. 
uh, through manifesting number one and then the marketing and trying to get a publisher and eventually getting a publisher, eventually getting a colorist, um, learning about pacing, learning more about the comics industry. I have I have adapted as we go, uh, which is how we've kind of been able to do what we do. Um, I uh, Again, I deliver the script to Maxie. He does his work. And then I rewrite a little bit to Maxie's script to better fit the pacing. Um, sometimes he doesn't like that because he, he is very much doing the panels and the panel size and stuff to, to what I had originally wrote. But, <laughs> but there's, there's, um, there's, a new ide- there's new ideas that, that manifest once the artist has had their hands that I think deserve to be communicated. And, and sometimes I completely get rid of what I wrote, right? And he just, he spoke in the panel and it was perfect. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, we've we've adapted. That was now one through three. Uh, it would have been like one through four uh, would have been the original, but the original script for three and four, uh, four started getting off the rails and just being not good, <laughs> not good at all. Um, so I was I was I've been proud to to be able to adapt and learn and and apply that and and even better through the crowdfunding efforts and stuff. I get feedback in between. So. Do I, ca- uh, you know, do I do I bow to the reader? No, but I can accommodate the reader better, and and I can communicate the ideas in a in a in a way that maybe will resonate with more people than my original kind of focused ideas, and um, so that's what kind of evolved to one through three, which is an origin arc. It 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 first issue. Um, I used to break this down like like this. The first issue is is. A journey into Jack's mind. It's an exploration of the character. Second issue is a journey into Jack's world, an exploration of the world, the dynamics, the politics, and a little bit of how he's surviving into it. Issue three is an exploration of his history and the start of the journey. And um, I think the I think we nailed that part of it. I'm really excited for issue four. I'm really proud of issue four. Yeah. But we'll, we'll we'll see if we can get that out. But right now, I want to get issue. You know, I want to get volume one. I want to get this first origin trilogy into into more folks' hands. Yeah, and within the within the, I've seen I've seen some I've seen some bits of sto- bits of story, um, or or rather the storytelling process, where so, where somebody inadvertently ends up writing themselves into a corner and ha- and has to has to give up on an idea that they were um that they were gung that they were gung ho on at the time. Did you ever have anything like that happen to you? Yeah, kind of. So again, that issue four, super derivative. Super derivative. So so Jack, Jack ended up having like uh, an even super like reinforced skeleton. He was super Wolverine. It was very derivative. Um, and and he, then he ended up having like gadgets and stuff too, which was goofy as hell. Uh, he had a, he had a, a, a very special uh, revolver that had a little bit of Outlaw Star in it, which we did keep some of that aspect. I, I really respect that anime. But um, it, it had caster shells basically to it. And so uh, it was um, – there, there's a lot. I, that, the whole issue four, I guess, was that. <laughs> and issue three ended up being changed a little bit too, because it fed into that, right? Mm-hmm. So it was adapted. But the main ideas in issue three uh, of this um, Lone Ranger Tonto story gone wrong, that that stayed. But um, the uh, the stuff that was going to follow, that that no, <laughs> we could do better. We are going to do better. <laughs> and when it. Can- now, when it comes to, when it come, this is so, something that I something that I remember talking with you about previously is um, is ma- is maintaining it is maintaining a a um icon an iconic look when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the character and I think would 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 it be would it be fair of me to say that when it came to the development of Jack Irons you ended up designing the character first and then built the world around him yeah it was kind of a i think this was a good way to do it it was kind of a a a they fed each other symbiotic um so the more i built jack's idea uh, of again <laughs> of, of 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 a comic version of, of doing the the uh, uh fistful of dollars job uh the doing a spaghetti western kind of version of samurai jack um that kind of built right that already had a, a, a direction a, a a form i guess a very loose form uh because you know i wasn't going to do the uh there's no purpose in doing the, the same story um but um 
there was there was a, a form to work off of and and so i just kind of slightly needed to justify and we don't really justify why he, why he wears armor he's immortal he could take a bullet and it instantly heals uh, <laughs> but but it's it's that again it's it's to communicate uh, a few specific ideas and that was the same with the horseman and then the horseman built the world around jack um so it was mainly these ideas that n- that I felt needed to be communicated in what I was doing uh, that built everything. Um, and it was symbiotic. It fed into each other. They, they didn't work against each other. They worked for each other for, for the betterment of what I've and our team has been doing. Mm-hmm. Now, within, now, within the... With, when it comes to the... When it comes to the... Um, when, it came, when it came to the development of, of those three issues... Um, what would you say? What would you say were some of the big learning experiences that you had, or some of the things that if you could, that you that if you could go back and yell at your past self about um, about you um, do? There's a lot of them. Um, there there's a lot of them. I mean, the whole thing's been a learning experience. The thing is, you know, I wouldn't take that away. It's how I needed to learn this to get to this point, and hopefully, I'll keep getting more. Uh, my main goal is to just not make the same mistake twice. Uh, I think it's okay if you make uh, make the mistake, but if you don't learn from it, then 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 it's a problem. Um, and so that's I mean the whole thing's been learned uh, from from getting a publisher. Um, I mean I spent I wasted three years uh, pitching uh, a nearly fully fully done but poorly lettered because I did the lettering uh, version of Jack Irons to to publishers. Uh, I mean that's three years that I can never get back uh, of creation time, but. Um, I think I needed to learn that, and that was the hard way to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I spent that much time and got one response from maybe 25 different publishers. Uh, one response, period, from one of the publishers. Uh, <laughs> and so that was kind of a hard lesson in the mechanics of the industry, um, which continue to be reinforced in different ways. Uh, but um, I needed to learn that, and it took that time to do it, right? And it took took that much more time from for Maxi to improve for us to get the issue to how it looks. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't take back and yell at myself for anything, but there's been there's been some mistakes I, I wish I didn't make. Uh, most recently, there was an association with somebody which I really wish I had not had. Um, but yeah, we're there's, skipping over that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm glad at least you know what I'm talking about. And um, so it's it, the, that's like the biggest one. That's the one that, that just hurts me to the core. Um, but uh, in terms of like making comics um no just because it's how it's the path i've walked and i wouldn't you know i wouldn't change it um i wish i could have learned faster maybe but then i'd be in a different place and it'd be a different product so i I can't really tell you Mm -hmm. um and when it when it comes to now when it comes to the um the the final thing um i've seen i've seen in some cases when it comes to tr- whether it be trade paperbacks or not quite trade paperbacks like those um pres- like some of those prestige books that um D- that dc had put out for a time um sometimes they'll put little little um extra materials in in them is that something that's been considered for the hard for the hardcover version the fat out of the hardcover. I think it's going to have um, nice versions of the five covers we've had done. So uh, we had a variant for issue one and a variant for issue two in addition to the original covers. Um, we're probably going to do that as chapter breaks and intros. Um, if, if and I, it's a possibility, if we were to explode, if somehow this made, you know, 15, 20, 30K, then, yeah, there's a lot of things that can go on the table. A ton. I mean, if uh, there's so many cool things that we can do. So many scripts and things that are just sitting there. My, my hope would be to just dive into issue four. But, but there's, there's a lot of, lot of things that could be done. Um, that's the main limiting factor. I wanted to, the main goal of this project, because of previous stumbles, and we're talking about those, um, I wanted to deliver something quicker. Uh, all we have to do is go to print, basically. Um, we have a new cover that's being done. Hopefully, I have by the end of the week to show folks. I'm really excited for that. Um, but um, it, it was mainly to deliver something cleanly, professionally, and, and without weight, as well as reach a new audience on a different platform that we haven't tried, which is Kickstarter. Um, there's going to, So it's 96 pages. Um, 
88 stories. So we do have six pages, but I think five of those are the covers, right? So it's it's unlikely there's going to be any bonus in there. And, and my previous floppy releases, right, we have, we have about 3,000 issues right now uh, between one through three um, Oh, a good chunk of them have gone out to backers, but but uh, that that have bonus material in them I wish wasn't now. So I've had to um, adjust my thinking uh, on a lot of that. Uh, issue two uh, has a lot of concept stuff, which I think is cool. Um, I would mm -hmm. like to do that um, again. I think that's probably how we will do uh, extras and further floppies down the ro uh, down the road. And uh, if we were able to fund volume two right away or something, then then that's a consideration. But I wanted something on budget with the lowest budget I could that was a better, more collectible format, a longer lasting format, and that hopefully would reach a new audience. Mm -hmm. Now. With with that kind of with that kind of thing in in mind, um, what are you what are you shooting for as far as a as far as a potential release win, window? I do I do know that um, I do know that pr I do know that printing it is, printing is a pain in the ass in and no matter in on the best of times and of co of course the coof hasn't made hasn't made pr printing and shipping any easier. Um, oh, that was our that biggest hurdle. A, never mind the fact that there's a special place in hell for for the for every sh for every country's um, shipping service. Period. Yeah, and no the, question. Um, my hope, my hope with the shipping for this is um, so. Every campaign, every campaign, I have under, underestimated the the production time, and that did include art delays. Um, production delays of the actual story material and, and assembling things. Um, this last one even had again. Uh, it was my first time dealing with the with the printer directly myself. Uh, the campaign before the uh, before issue one through three's campaign. Um, the campaign for issue three is what, what basically uh, to be the least confusing. Um, that had it was my first time dealing with it. As, as you said, it's it's a, it's a headache at at best of times. Um, so again, that was my hope with this is that. Everything except for the cover um, is done, and, and we're going to do the back cover, and then we got to do the um, the nice inside paper sleeve things that that bind the uh, the pages to the cover and all that nice stuff. Um, that's that's the only production time. So I still I've always been off by at least yeah. You know, we delivered the digital uh, early for issue number three, which was nice. We delivered it about a month early. Um, but yeah, we did. F we still have fulfilled about five months late. Mm -hmm. um, Previously, before that, we had fulfilled the issue number one within within the time frame I had expected, but then the issue number two, we had to find a new colorist, and there was a lot of uh, adaptation that needed to come with uh, during that, that transition, and uh, that took a lot longer. So my hope is by September, um, at the latest, we can get these out, but it should be sooner than that. There's, there's no reason it shouldn't be sooner than that. Um, my concern is my printer um, also does, like, school yearbooks and stuff so that's that's during the summer it can be a little hairy with their demand um they do cookbooks they do a whole bunch of different stuff and they also do a lot of really good comics uh but uh so that's that's the main concern however uh, by the time we finish by the time the files are assembled and stuff um theoretically it could be within two months of the finish date theoretically that we have books ready to ship but i again i didn't want to underestimate the delivery time yet again um the whole bit of this is this campaign is to pull everything into a more professional machine that's that's the whole point uh to to really solidify what we're doing put it in a better format and and reach a new audience but but really to to tighten the, the bolts mm -hmm. now with now uh, with that with that kind of things with that kind of thing said um and you and be, be, uh, beyond the um beyond the beyond the material when it com when it comes to the, when it comes to this trilogy which um would it be fair of me to say that that the that these three issues are tr are could be considered could um be considered the origin story of Jack Irons Absolutely. Um, the other thing we like to do, and I, I've made a point of, which I think really helps, um, is each 
each section, each chapter, um, if you were to pick them up in floppies from your local comic shop or something, if we're able to get enough. Uh, we've had comic shop backers, so hopefully, actually, a few very select, very very specific comic shops will have uh, uh, some, some floppy issues. But they're supposed to be um, relatively self-contained, right? You could pick up issue two and just enjoy issue two. You might be missing some of the weight of who Jack is and what he is, but you're getting a self-contained tale of this dystopian world. Uh, issue one, if you were just to pick that up, which is more likely I'd assume people are more likely to pick up an issue one. Uh, that um, that would manifest, you know, a, a, a decent self-contained story with an end and a teaser. Um, issue three supposed to do basically the same thing: this Lone Ranger and Tonto uh, story that's fallen into this grim dark universe. Um, so that that I I hope that each chapter, and we're going to do this moving forward with Jack, issue 4 is self-contained as well, but feeds into issue 5, uh, and was fed from issue 3. So they, they connect, but they aren't uh, absolutely necessary to have read in order or, or, or together. I still think it provides a good value. But um, at the end of the day, yeah, um, the definitive way to read it is going to be this 1 through 3 hardcover. Um, it has the best pacing. It'll communicate the ideas the clearest, communicate the characters, and what we want to do um, the clearest. And I think by the end, the teaser that we use at the end of issue three, you'll get an idea of, you know, this is a much grander adventure than what we've presented, and we've presented a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, and um, I'll I'll certainly be keep I'll certainly be keeping an eye on th on how it de on how it develops because. Well, I'd because well we well um. I want I want to see how long I want to see how long it takes before somebody tr before somebody tries to do Jack Irons in a John Wayne impression. It's going to happen. You know how it, this <laughs> is with me magic. If it hasn't happened already, it's going to happen eventually. I would hope we can get enough awareness that people take that level of interest. <laughs> um, I've been blessed. We've been blessed with tons of fan art since our inception. Again, it's because the 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 icon of of the character and the and the visuals. But uh, artists like to draw it. Um, but uh, still, I I mean that's that's what I'm all about. That community interaction. It's it's. I like to say the best of the weird space west is built because of you. Uh, we don't. We are. You know, we're, we're the gears, we're the machine, right? But but we need the fuel, and and there's so many different ways you can fuel us, and and that kind of community interaction really means a lot. Mm -hmm. This kind of community interaction means a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and of and of course, but with with all with all that said, and I do do appreciate the do appreciate men mentioning me in that in that kind of communication. Um, yeah. I do want I do want to sincerely thank you once again for one being patient with me, two putting up with time zone hell, and three um, being willing to come all the way up to the temple to enjoy the uh, madness that com that comes up here. Oh, I appreciate the opportunity very much. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, whether it's to discuss the future incarnations of Jack Irons. Or or just to or just to um shit post about how god awful that for that first Marvel Knights attempt at Punisher was. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that wasn't Welcome Back Frank, was it? I appreciated Welcome Back Frank. No, it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> that. It was it was redemp it was redemption. Oh, the yeah, we did speak about that last time. Uh, Angel Punisher. Yeah, yeah, that that yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we do need to talk about that again. <laughs> I enjoyed our previous conversation on that. <laughs> but as I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. That would help. And of course, <laughs> a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then... On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!